I spent the last few weeks working on a hunter killer tank type for my game. The behavior that I want for this tank type is to be constantly, aggressively tracking the player's tank wherever it goes. I already have a working A star pathfinding implementation in GD script. But even with that in place, I found it surprisingly challenging to implement my desired behavior because of all the regular and corner cases that can happen in my game. One of these corner cases is this. The hunter killer tank, the HK tank, is the dark gray tank, while the blue tank is the player's tank. There is no path from the HK tank to the player because of all the trees and the border of the map. So what should it do? It should take the player's current tile and find the closest tile that it has a path to. The function that I wrote to accomplish this uses GDScript's pool vector to array as a queue. But then I started thinking that queues are usually written as linked lists. I wondered how much faster a linked list would perform versus GDScript's built-in pool vector to array, or its generic array for that matter. And that's when I started down this side quest rabbit hole. It might be useful to do a quick recap on what and how linked list queues work. If you're already familiar with this and only want the benchmarks, you can skip this using the timestamps. On the other hand, if you're completely new to this channel and you want more background on my game instead, I have a whole playlist of devlogs going back a year. I'll link to that in the description below. In any case, a queue is a data structure where the first element that goes in is also the first element that goes out. Think of it like the line at your grocery store. Traditionally, when an element is added to the queue, it's called NQ. And when it is removed, it is called DQ. You can use GDScript's array to create a queue. You NQ using array.append and DQ using array.popfront. So what is a linked list? And why bother with it if we can already make a queue using an array? A linked list is a data structure where each element is an object with a value property that holds the value that you want to store. It also has a next property that is a pointer to another element. In the array example, an element in the array is just the value that you want to store. It is not wrapped in a special object like it is in a linked list. Additionally, a linked list will also have two pointers. A head pointer that points to the front of the queue, the head element, and a tail pointer that points to the back of the queue, the tail element. To add to a linked list, first you have to instance a new element and set its value to the new value. Then, using the tail pointer, access the current tail element, point its next property to the new element, then finally, point the tail pointer to the new element. That's an NQ operation in a linked list. To DQ, first copy the head pointer to a new variable so you don't lose the current head element. Then, set the head pointer to the current head element's next property. This will make it point to the next element in the queue. Finally, return the current head element's value. It might seem like it is a lot more steps to achieve the same thing as using a GD script array, but that's only because append and pop front abstract away all the steps from you. Under the hood, your computer will do a bunch of steps for you when you use a GD script array. This is especially true for the pop front method, where the number of steps grows depending on how many elements you have in your queue. Even the official GD script documentation warns, on large arrays, this method is much slower than pop back, as it will re-index all the array's elements every time it's called. The larger the array, the slower pop front will be. On the other hand, for linked lists, the steps are just changing pointers. Modern computers can do this very quickly. There is no need to mem copy anything. It also doesn't matter how many elements you have in your linked list queue, you're still just changing the head and tail pointers. The number of steps stay the same. This is why theoretically, it is faster to use a linked list or a queue than an array, especially for very large queues. With all of that said, here's my implementation of a linked list queue in GDScript. I'll link to this repo under the like button below. Next, I'll break it down piece by piece. 
the first two lines declare the class name LLQ and how it inherits from a reference as its base class. The next lines declare the element class, which are the objects that are in the queue. Each element has a value, which can be any type, and the next, which is a pointer to another element. On initialization, it sets the passed in V to value and next to null. The lines after that cover the initialization of the queue itself. I gave it a name property to make it easier to identify in benchmarks, but the important properties are length, to keep track of the length of the queue, head, which is a pointer to an element, and tail, which is also a pointer to an element. Then we get to the NQ method. This does the work described previously to add to the queue. It also includes a handful of lines to update the length and handle the situation when the queue is empty. The DQ method also works as described previously, with a few lines to simply return null if the queue is empty. It also sets the tail to null if there is only one element left in the queue. Finally, I included the dump method to walk the entire linked list and free every element. This is unfortunately necessary with very large linked lists because of a bug in Godot. More on that later. To benchmark performance, the first thing I wrote was a simple time it function to measure the amount of time it would take to execute a function fn. Next, in order to simplify things, I wrote two additional classes that share the same interface as my link list q class, an ARR class for arrays and the PVA class for pool vector two arrays. You can pause the video to study their implementation if you'd like. Then, I wrote two kinds of benchmarks to measure my link list queues, performance versus an array or pool vector two array queue. This first one tests the time it takes to add or remove elements on the margin. Specifically, if the queue already has n elements, how long will it take to enqueue another 1000 or DQ 1000? The second benchmark I wrote measures a queue's performance with a workload very similar to what I needed to do to solve my problem in the game. In the game, I needed to help me find the closest tile to the player tile that has a path. The tables in these results were created by this print statement. So the first column is the type of queue, LLQ for link list queue, PVA for pool vector to array queue, and ARR for array queue. The second column is the size of the n input, while the third column is the time it took in milliseconds to perform the operation in the benchmark. For enqueuing on the margin, all three data structures perform the operation in constant time. This means that it doesn't matter how many elements are already in the data structure, it takes the same amount of time to add another thousand. This makes sense for linked lists, as discussed previously, but it also makes sense for GD script arrays and pool vector 2 arrays, assuming that the implementation underneath those is some kind of dynamic array. For dynamic arrays, given that the underlying static array has enough capacity, adding another element to it should take constant time as well. Another interesting thing to note with the results is that the link list queue actually performed slowest by up to 2 milliseconds at every size. This is likely due to the fact that instantiating an element of the LLQ, the element class, has a cost, while the array and pool vector 2 array don't have to pay that cost when in queuing. However, for dequeuing on the margin, my benchmark showed a 10x growth in line with the growth of the number of elements already in the array. These results make sense given the aforementioned warning from the official GD script documentation for arrays pop front method. The larger the array, the slower pop front will be. The result was similarly linear for pool vector 2 arrays, albeit with a smaller slope. This means that even though pool vector 2 arrays are much more efficient as queues for vector 2s, they are still affected by the number of elements in them and will become very slow as that number grows. For my linked list implementation, however, it didn't matter how many elements are already in the queue. The number of milliseconds to add another thousand didn't grow in relation to it. This is as expected, given that even with one million elements already in, the number of steps required to dequeue an item remains the same. 
Now that we verify that all three perform enqueuing and dequeuing as we expected, let's see how they actually perform in my real world use case as mocked up by my simulated search function. At 1000 operations, the link list queue was actually the slowest of the three. Three times slower than just using a pool vector to array and the millisecond slower than an array. At 10,000 operations, the link list is only 36% slower than the pool vector to array, while the time it takes for the array to do it begins to jump. At 100,000 operations, the pool vector to array finally loses to the link list, taking almost three and a half seconds to complete the task, while the link list completed it in less than a second, or 77% faster. The array on the other, third hand, took over 35 seconds this performance would be unacceptable even in a turn-based game. Finally, at 1 million operations, the pool vector 2 array is almost 100% slower than the link list queue, which finished in 11 seconds. The array took a staggering 63 minutes to complete the task. While benchmarking the link list queue, I kept running into an issue where Godot would seg fault whenever I ran the benchmark. It only happened when the amount of elements reached a certain size and when the link list queue was dereferenced. After some experimentation, I discovered that the bug would stop happening if I walked the entire list and dereferenced every element before dereferencing the link list queue itself. This is what the dump function does. I also wrote a function to trigger the bug on demand. It basically takes an integer and creates a link list queue of that size, then returns the function. This causes the queue to be dereferenced, which causes the bug. I found that it happens around 27,550 elements on my desktop, but around 35,000 elements on my old 2016 MacBook Pro. It would be very interesting to go deep into the Godot source code someday and study it. But this benchmarking side quest already took too much time away from regular game development. I unfortunately can't afford to go deeper into the rabbit hole because I need to finish my game. So what's my conclusion after going this deep into the rabbit hole? While link list queues are cool and always fun to implement in a new language, for my specific use case, I'll just stick to using a pool vector 2 array as a queue. The map size of my game only has 40 tiles across and 22 tiles down. This means that even in the absolute worst case scenario, the maximum number of operations to search for an open tile will be 880. The benchmarks show that for 1000 operations, the best performer is a pool vector 2 array, so that's what I'll use. Perhaps the more meta conclusion is that even if a data structure is theoretically faster, it is still wise to benchmark performance for your specific use case. This is especially true when the size of your data is very small because a lot of times, using a simple array will be fine.